So just a warm welcome. Uh, my name is Tullis Matson. I'm the Managing Director of Stallion AI Services. Um, and just put a, a small presentation together to show you what we do here at Twemlow's Hall Farm and sort of the diversification and the innovation uh, where we've come from a sort of a farming background that's been in the family farm for sort of well over 50 years and uh, where we've diversified and taken the farm to now and hopefully found it interesting. There's there's, there's, there's quite a few slides to get through, but um, you can obviously soon flick through them. But it'll give you a bit of an idea and a background of where we're going. And um, yeah, I think we've, there's, a, there's an amazing future, what we're doing here in the equine world and obviously on other sides of things with the tissue banking and cloning and so on. So um, have a look um, and hope you enjoy the presentations and um, we'll look forward to hearing from you. So just take you back of the history of uh, Twemlow's Hall Farm. Um, the actual farm here where we are today is about 360 acres. We back in the 1960s, uh, there was two other, two or three other farms. We, my grandfather and father tended as well. And uh, they had about 350 cows on these farms, two and a half thousand pigs. So in those days, and I suppose even nowadays, that was a, a really quite a sizable farm. Unfortunately, back in 1968, the, the foot and mouth took its toll on us and literally wiped out everything, and we had to start from scratch again. Our main production on the farm was actually cheese, and we made uh, Red Leicester, Double Glosser, and our signature cheese really was Cheshire cheese. We seemed to win a lot of prizes at Nantwich Show and, and all over the country. Uh, you could find our cheeses in Waitrose and Marks and Spencers, and we produced about a ton of cheese a day, with the with the way the the offshoot of obviously the the cheese going to the feed the pigs. So we were trying to be as, as self sufficient as we can. So that was really in the heyday of the farm. But uh, then things have moved on, and um, for one reason or another, we had to uh, stop making cheese, and that's why we diversified to where we are today. So the present day at the moment is um, a farm is split into two. My brother has about 330 acres where he has the mayor insemination centre. And I've got my own business, Stallion AI Services, uh, which is a semen, uh, Stallion Seaman Collection Centre, which you'll um, see, find out a little bit more about it in a minute. Just going back to my brother's side, obviously on the diversification side, he set up on the farm a sort of 60 acre solar panels back in 2015, pushing out sort of 10 megawatts. And that lease runs for sort of the next sort of 20, 25 years. Just to give you a bit of an overview of the equine industry, um, I had to do a presentation somewhere else and had to find out a few more details about it. And I was quite amazed at the, the stats on it. There's over a million horses in the country, sort of eight, eight billion turnover with half a billion in exports. And we're the second biggest employer after farming with, with sort of 19,000 equine businesses and 200,000 employees sort of uh, directly or indirectly involved in the equine industry. So our part to play in this, uh, uh, the Stallion AI services side, uh, we employ 26 uh, members of staff. Some are, are part time, but mostly full time. Anything from uh, office staff um, to uh, a lab team and also a yard team as well. And that's increased by about 15% just in the last year. I'm very lucky. I've got a great team behind us and we've done uh, well in the last two years in awards. Uh, we've won the Shropshire Chamber International Trade Award in 2017 and last year we won the uh, Technology Enterprise and Innovation Award 2017 as well and this year we're very lucky to win this again uh, as well uh, which I thought we were, very, we were up against some stiff opposition and last year it led us on to Small Business of the Year for the for the West Mid the whole of the West Midlands for the Chamber of Commerce. So um, this is all down to the, the great team that I have behind me and the enthusiasm that they carry with us. So we've just moved into a brand new facility. So we just invested two million pounds in this sort of state of the art facilities with a new laboratory, new um, stable block as well. And we can go through now what we actually do here as well. 
So our current core business is we collect and free semen for UK and worldwide market. That's that's what we do most of the time. But there's a lot of offshoots now that we're doing that you'll find out a bit more about it. We uh, we collect and freeze uh, semen. We assess the semen assessment. We do fertility investigations on stallions. We do a lot of lecturing consultancy. We've got a lecture theatre upstairs that can take 150 people as well. We have a quarantine centre and we carry out worldwide export services. The business was established in 2000, uh, although they, we started actually freezing semen in 96. We've frozen from well over a, a, a thousand uh, stallions now, maybe up to 1,200 stallions from well over sort of 47, 50 different breeds now. We've exported to 27 different countries and our exports have gone up dramatically, which you'll see in a, in a minute over the last few years. We have one of two centres in the country that has got a licence to export for worldwide distribution and one of 15 for, that can do within the Europe. Uh, and I think we're one of the only centres that ships chilled semen uh, to Europe, which means it has to be there within 24 hours. Just to give you a bit of an idea of the growth on the international trade side of things, we freeze in straws and the straws from back in 2012, we, we, we shipped about 1,500 straws around the world and that's increased to last year to seven, nearly 7,500. And the countries, we shipped to about six different countries in 2012 and that's increased to last year, we shipped to 21 different countries, uh, overall 27. And this is a big growth area I can see. We're trying to branch out into more and more countries. We were the first ones to get into Kenya, to Israel, to Brazil. And now we're looking at other countries like Mexico uh, and China and so on. The actual value of the exports, we've had to come up with these figures uh, for um, some stats for government for the Brexit negotiations. And they want to know what, how much the equine industry actually exported in our, in our sector. And um, yeah, you can see there's a good, good growth, steady growth. And we can see this was a very small part of our business for years. And you can see it's a major part of our business now. So the value of exports was half a million pounds back in 2012. And it, this has gone up to, you know, over four million pounds last year. And we can see, a, you know, a good steady growth. This can be attributed to sometimes some particular stallions, as you'll see on the next slide. So we're very lucky to have an array of stallions here. Um, one of the, the main ones we've got in at the moment is a stallion called Big, Sp Big Star. He won at the Rio Olympics gold with the individual gold with Nick Skelton and also won the, the team gold at uh, the London as well, as well. So he's one of the only stallions to win a double gold medal winning uh, um, at the two Olympics. Um, we sold nearly sort of 1.2 million pounds worth of his semen last year. So, you know, he's, he's a great stallion to have around. Uh, but we have had to fight off the Europeans. They've been trying to get the stallion over there because they believe they can they can really market him well. So we've done, you know, it's great for the owners have kept him in the UK and because quite often these stallions do go abroad to be marketed. Other things we put on here, we carry out an open day every year. Um, this year was a particularly good one. We were helped by the weather. We had well over a thousand spectators. Again, we'd be about the largest um, uh, 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 open day in the UK for stallion shows. We had 27 stallions and uh, we raised over £5,000 for the Rare Breed Survival Trust, which we'll come on to in a minute. The Rare Breed Survival Trust is very much close to our heart and a lot of the work we carry out here does involve this charity as well. Other things that we do on the innovation and technology side is we put CCTV cameras in all the stallions boxes. You might say, well, that's nothing new, but we did start this nearly 12 years ago. And this gives the owners, they can look on their iPhones or their computers and they can monitor and look at their stallions 24 hours a day, which give them a bit of sense of security and a bit of a sense of um, well-being that they know their stallions are being well looked after. We're just to be able to create a new website uh, this year so people can order things online as opposed to over the phone and eventually doing live streaming as well um, and um, we, we do a lot on social media as well to, to, to help market these stallions. 
something as a business, we're always trying to be one step ahead of the opposition. So we're always trying to push the boundaries of science, do a lot of research and development. And this is something I'm very keen on. And this is something as a business, we, 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 it's a business ethos. So we're always trying to make new extenders where the new extenders means we can freeze more stallions and hopefully get better pregnancy results. So uh, we're always investing in research and development. Something we've just uh, helped launch and helped set the premises of is something called the eye sperm. Uh, whereas normally, conventionally, when you're assessing semen, you look down a microscope or you have um, some pretty high-tech laboratory equipment to do it for you. Now we've helped develop with a with a, Thai, th a company in Thailand, um, so you can analyze semen on an iPad. It's very straightforward to use. You literally got a case. You put the semen in in the back of this case, and it tells you the quality of it. It records the uh, the semen quality as well and tells you whether it's uh, ha how good or, or bad it is. This can be used in equine, bovine, canine, so it can be used in multi-species right across the board and of course they can take it out into the field to use it as well. Something that we work very closely with is the Rare Breed Survival Trust. Now my father was president of the Rare Breed Survival Trust, I'm a trustee and the Rare Breed Survival Trust is here to try and preserve our rare and native breeds. Since it was formed in 76, they've never lost a breed yet, but we are very close to some of these breeds coming to extinction, uh, especially on the equine side. So we are trying to help, trying to find ways that we can uh, preserve their seam. And so there was a launch of the Heavy Horse Appeal this year, which uh, this next video will show you the plight of them and how endangered they are. half million on the brand new facilities here we've built a state-of-the-art laboratory we've made a, a, a extender or medium we put in the seam and that actually frees it at minus 196 degrees so in 10 20 30 or 40 years time we can actually repopulate a generation with, with that genetic line it's amazing how you can bring something back to life that is so cold and then straight away get pregnancies it's quite amazing So moving on, this, um, as you saw in that video with the Suffolk punches, there's, there's less than 72 females left in the country. I think there's only 300 left in the world. I'm afraid this breed will go extinct in 10 years if we don't do something 
dramatically to save them. These horses that you're looking at now, they were the backbone of the British farming many, many years ago during the war and on the battlefields as well. There's over a million of them then. There's less than a thousand of them left in the world now. And as I said, only 72 females left in the country. So we are trying to help with our new technology in the lab trying to preserve these animals. This is three stallions you can see here where we're collecting and freezing so we can ship their semen out to Australia and New Zealand and vice versa. They can send their genetic lines here because the problem with them, the gene pool is getting so small, you're getting inbreeding and then you're getting infertility problems. One of the works, so the works we're doing, that was on the male side, now we're looking at the female side. Uh, Problems with the, with the, the, the female side, they're obviously only produce, produce one foal a year and obviously with these rare breeds we want to try and produce more. One of the ways we can do it is with embryo transfer and as you can see on this uh, picture here, the uh, foal in the bottom right, that is uh, an embryo that's come out of the mare on the top left. And this is the first foal ever born by embryo transfer from a Suffolk punch this is. So uh, this is one way that we can help with the breeds and we carried out this uh, about four or five years ago with a success and we're carrying on today. Other work we like doing or enjoy doing is we're setting up laboratories all over the world. We've set up a laboratory uh, acting as consultants and helping them um, with all the expertise surrounding setting up the labs for collecting and freezing of stallion semen. Uh, one in Egypt in Cairo in 15 and Saudi Arabia in, in 2016. Kuwait we set up a lab there uh, in 2017 and in Abu Dhabi we helped these um, three vets uh, setting up and, and trying to do the teaching and trying to get them to process semen to the highest standard so they got the best uh, fertility results. A lot of this work is obviously with Arabian horses which are obviously very much very popular out in the Middle East. Something else we, we, we like doing, we've been doing for the last four years, we do a, a knowledge transfer uh, workshop. Uh, we've been doing this, let's say, for a while now, and we combine some of the top studs in Europe together. Um, that we find there's no conflict of interest because they're abroad. And between the sort of four or five studs that we do, we most probably freeze about sort of three or four hundred stallions a year, which you just can't get that expertise anywhere else without sitting down around a table. And each year we go to each other's stud. I helped set this up, I say, about four or five years ago. This year we had the pleasure of all having here, and we did a trip out to Chester Zoo. And uh, it wasn't all, all, all play. We obviously did work as well, uh, looking at different ways we can freeze from these stallions and so on. Um, we do a bit of international training consultancy, so we go out and actually do the training for people out there as well abroad. Uh, teaching them how to handle stallions and obviously to, teaching people from all different nationalities and uh, so there is quite a language barrier. It's something I really enjoy, I have to admit, and uh, it's great to see different cultures. We do a reason about lecturing as well. Uh, I was very kind of being asked to uh, lecture at the Farming Business Innovation uh, uh, um, show this year at the NEC. Uh, talking about the work we do with the Rare Breed Survival Trust, also doing presentations at the Beaver Congress of British Equine Veterinary Association, um, and uh, that's one of the, the largest equine uh, veterinary equine shows uh, there is in Europe. Went to Texas this year, um, working with the uh, Livestock Conservancy. The Livestock Conservancy are this, exactly the same as the or similar to the uh, Rare Breed Survival Trust, but obviously in America, very similar aims. And we're trying to look at some of their bloodlines over there because our gene pools are getting so small to see if we can actually um, ship um, some semen from here to over there and vice versa to stop some of these, the inbreeding and hopefully stop some of these breeds from going potentially extinct. We're holding uh, or hosting a, a conference here this year, uh, just really on all the new techniques that are out there in the equine reproduction world. And we're, we're very lucky we've, we've got in sort of four, three or four of the best lecturers in the world on the reproduction side, the equine reproduction from America uh, and so on. So this is, um, we're getting a, a lot of delegates from all over Europe 
and uh, from the UK and hopefully they will be able to gain a great deal of knowledge from these, um, these lecturers and their expertise. So some other techniques that uh, we've helped develop here is something called um, ICSI. Uh, this is, we had the first ever ICSI fall on the, on the ground over here. My brother's doing this next door. This is where we're getting one sperm cell and then putting it into one egg. A lot of this works come from the human side and we've actually got people from the Liverpool Women's Hospital who have actually helped us perfect this technique. Uh, although it's quite widely used in places like Italy and Argentina, uh, this is very much a first for the UK with this technique on the equine side. This is uh, video is really interesting. This video is one of the first ever videos of showing how an embryo splits and starts uh, to, to form um, uh, into, into a foal. So um, it takes a picture every 20 minutes. This is what they use and again in the human labs and you can see the cells slowly dividing and dividing and dividing. Uh, and it, so it takes a picture every 20 minutes and it's a time-lapse camera and you can actually see how uh, the inner workings and actually how life first starts uh, as an embryo. This is our first success uh, with the uh, ICSI, uh, born back in 2015. We've had quite a few foals since then. Um, so this is obviously more on my brother's side who's right next door. But this is quite a milestone really in equine reproduction to have this foal, first foal on the ground. Something I've helped develop um, just in the last sort of 10 years uh, is something called epididymal uh, semen harvesting. This is where we take semen from testicles uh, and freeze it down. Now, why would we do this? This is normally when it's done as a trauma, as a last minute ditched attempt to try and salvage some semen. We had a standing with a broken leg and they had no uh, um, semen uh, available from it. The stallion hadn't frozen, so they asked, could we castrate the stallion? So they sent the testicles to us um, and we froze the semen down. And this was the subsequent fall back, I think, in 2013. Now we carry out this quite usually about two or three of these a month. Um, and it's one way of saving a, a, a Stalin's genetic lines as a last resort. This proved so successful actually, this bull here was bought at the sales up in Scotland for I think it was 13,000 guineas and um, we were asked, it broke its leg, and we were asked can we do a, a bull's testicles and we thought well we've never done this before but we'll, we'll have a go. They sent them down to us, the farmer, the, the bull had died 48 hours before and the farmer said look whatever you can do it's, it's, it's really precious to us these, these bloodlines, these genetic lines. So we did it and then a few years later uh, we had a phone call to say we think that the, the, the calf has been born, it's the first ever calf that's been born via this method. So this is fairly sort of innovative new techniques that we're using. And then the press got hold of it. Uh, obviously there wasn't any Brexit or anything else to talk about then. Um, so they had a field day with this uh, on, on the front page of the Sun uh, using all the expletives, but it, it gave us a lot of good press. I think it gave them a lot of good press and people now know this technology is out there, which they never really did before. Also what we're doing now is um, working with uh, camels and we are very lucky that you know we've been out to the Middle East a few times now and the camel semen is very tricky semen to work with and they find it very difficult to freeze this semen so we're out there trying to help them do this. Uh, you can see that one on the bottom left is a um, it's a it's a beauty camel and the one on the right is a racing camel. Believe it or not the beauty camel is the one that's worth the most. That, Camel on the left was uh, uh, it was sold for 25 million dirhams, which is about five million pounds, believe it or not. Uh, yes, I know you wouldn't think there's much in beauty camels, but obviously there is. But they're reproductively they're very difficult to freeze. So we've gone out there to try and help them freeze. This was last November. See if we can help them freeze the semen. Other work we're just looking into now is sexing semen. Now in the bovine world, this is quite prevalent and and um, 
uh, is quite widespread but in the equine world it's not because the semen doesn't freeze very well doesn't sex very well to do with the shape of it so we were in talks with the went to texas and spoke to sexing technology who have the rights for sexing semen they bought cogent out which are just down the road which are a big bovine stud and they're half an hour away from us so hopefully in november we're going to start trying to see if we can sex equine semen this is really important on the rare breed side of things because um, like the Cleveland Bays two, uh, two years ago had 36 foals born, uh, 27 or 28 were all male. And this can have a devastating effect when a breed is so rare if, they're all, if there's a lot more heavier weight in males than there are females. So they want females born really so they can carry on breeding at a better rate. Now, really starting to save the best to last. This is something I'm really excited in. We've just set this company up in February, Gemini Genetics. So this is about storing tissue samples for possible future use, maybe in cloning, uh, to preserve some bloodlines and then maybe reintroduce those species, God forbid anything happened to them. We're hopefully going to be the, the, one of the first tissue banks in the UK to start storing tissue samples for cloning for future. It does sound maybe a bit Jurassic Parkish, but you look at the northern white rhino that's gone extinct. This is a way that we could maybe save some of these these rare endangered animals. So we're always trying to be at the forefront of technology. It's, it's really exciting. Uh, we're linked in with Chester Zoo and other other zoos as well to try and save the genetic lines. And also we're doing this with um, some of our rare breed horses as well. We've I've uh, got one clone here already. I think it's the only clone stallion in the country in the UK. Um, it's, a, it's a clone of Gem Twist. It's called Mercus Gem. It's a show jumping stallion. Gem Twist is one of the most prolific show jumpers of all time. And now he was a gelding. Uh, so obviously you can have a young stock. So the only way we get a stallion is obviously clone him. And now we've got this stallion here that stands with us. So we had this article written about us uh, about sort of a month ago, and um, it was uh, sort of highlighting the work we do with this, this this new tissue bank and what it can do for these rare endangered animals. Believe it or not, there's 25,000 species in the next three years will go extinct. Uh, and 80% of that is man-made, 20% there through natural causes going to go extinct. So some of these species we don't barely even know about this uh, as we've heard about the you've heard about the the northern white rhino going extinct and how we can bring that one back there's something called the the mountain chicken frog which you may not know about but there's only seven animals left in the world or seven frogs i should say left in the world so there's some very rare endangered animals and one way we can preserve these animals is we can preserve their tissue samples and as i say that's what we want to start here there's a there's a seed bank that's called the millennium seed bank that, that sits down south so if there's a catastrophe they could repopulate the world with all the seeds of the trees but there's, there isn't anything on the tissue bank so we want to be one of the first tissue banks for for uh, rare endangered animals uh, or all around the world to be stored here as well This is Mercus Gem. Remarkably, he's a clone of a horse called Gem Twist, who was renowned the world over for being one of the best show jumpers of all time. And he's a stallion, so he can breed. And depending on where your ethics lie, whether there's the willingness and the money, perhaps scientifically, this is another way of saving breeds from extinction. Uh, we work very closely with Chester Zoo. We've been working closely with Chester Zoo for a few years now on the epididymal side. So when they have to put a stallion, I'm sorry, not a stallion, an animal down, uh, they send us the testicles and that's one way of preserving those stallions' um, bloodlines. So we freeze the semen and then it's frozen there indefinitely. And then later on, if we need to uh, um, inseminate any of these lions or anything like that or on the goods, we can do by thawing this frozen semen out. As I say, other work we've been working with Chester Zoo, they're only half an hour away from us, is now we're hopefully just about to start doing this tissue banking. Uh, and there's various animals that we've already started doing. Uh, on, with Logan, the, well, the, the, the logo is uh, bank it or lose it, basically. If we don't bank some of the semen, this or these tissue samples, we could lose these animals uh, forever. 
Other collaborations we work with, we're somebody called Imka from Hamburg Zoo. We Our innovative freezing extender that we freeze our stallions with actually works very well in freezing elephants and rhinos uh, and wildebeest seamen as well. She works out there on a big conservation um, side. There's about 50 elephants a day that have been uh, poached. So uh, although there is quite a few numbers, they are dramatically shrinking uh, year on year. And again, soon they will become really endangered as well. And a way of trying to preserve some of these animals is obviously, again, freezing some of their semen. And we're very proud to be working closely alongside these, these uh, experts. Uh, we had Owen Patterson here not so long ago, and um, he um, very kindly had a look around our centre to see what we were doing. He's our local MP and seeing how he could help. And one of the things he was helping us with is well, the exports. We've got a lot of issues with exports, raising export papers. But uh, yes, he had some very kind words that he put on Twitter for us uh, saying about his, his time here looking around. Also, yes, we've, we've done well with um, famous people coming around. We had the Princess Anne actually officially opened our centre on the last, I think it's the last week in February. Um, she came, she's obviously very horsey herself, so I th I'd like to think she enjoyed her visit looking around. Um, and we gave her a demonstration of a stallion semen collection. She looked around the labs. She met all the team, which I think is the most important side of it. They're the ones that uh, sort of really um, make make this business happen. And she's yeah, she, she, she's treasurer of the um, or president of the Suffolk Punch Society as well, which are the ones that are really endangered as well. So she had a keen interest in them as well. So our future goals. What's what's happening? So. Um, we've, we're looking into obviously semen sexing, tissue banking is obviously a big thing, further development of our lecturing and training courses that we have here, development in unique extenders, we're actually taking on a PhD student from Nottingham Trent University to, to really look and see how we can freeze these stallions as well, better further technology and freezing as well, as we were saying, working closer with zoos to cryopreserve reserve and uh, do the tissue banking from their rare endangered species as well. So a big thank you for your time. Hopefully we've demonstrated the diversification we've done here is really second to none, I'd like to think. We we love what we do here. We like, love to make a difference. We like to make the impossible possible, um, but it's all down to our teamwork. Uh, and without them, uh, I, you know, we, we are nothing. And uh, really they all make a difference. And that's one of our ethos is, is to, uh, everyone here can make a difference, whether it's out in the yard with the stallions, in the office or in the lab, uh, trying to um, preserve these stallions and these rare animals. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Hope it wasn't too long. Sorry if I went on a bit and uh, look forward to hearing from you.